Welcome back kapatid to our ongoing series on the introduction to persons and family relations. I know I called it persons and we are following the law as it is laid down in the civil code but I am taking every opportunity to introduce you to other concepts and their application in other subjects. We're taking a look at Articles 8 to 10 of the Civil Code. Article 8 of the Civil Code provides that judicial decisions applying or interpreting the laws or the Constitution shall form part of the legal system of the Philippines. Article 9 provides that no judge or court shall decline to render judgment by reason of the silence, obscurity, or insufficiency of the laws. Finally, Article 10 provides that in case of doubt, in the interpretation or application of laws, it is presumed that the lawmaking body intended right and justice. To prevail. By the end of this lesson, our goal kapatid is to master the following principles. 1. The distinction of common law and civil law and how they are applied to our laws in the Philippines. 2. The principle of stare decisis and the definition of an obiter dictum. 3. Overview of the rules in the construction and interpretation of laws. All of this and more coming right up! Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. In Texon versus Commission on Elections, the Supreme Court defined civil law as the mass of precepts which determine and regulate the relations of assistance, authority, and obedience among the members of the family and those which exist among members of society for the protection of private interests. What is the difference between common law and civil law? According to Attorney Robuya, this question was asked once in the bar exams in 1997. The civil law system relies primarily on codal, statutory, and written law. It is supplemented from case law. Ang batayan ng batas ay kung ano lang ang nasusulat, hindi na lumalayo doon. On the other hand, common law is the law that is derived from case law. Common law continues to evolve as more and more judges apply the law and modify or adapt them specifically to meet different contexts and situations. In the Philippines, our judicial system is a combination of the civil law system and the common law. Our laws draw heavily from the Spanish law at maging ang ating mga pangunawa sa ating batas ay galing din mula sa mga Kastila. Our civil code borrows heavily from the Spanish Civil Code. Our revised penal code, although it has been in effect since 1932, was originally in Spanish. Mahabang kwento kapatid kung sino si Manresa, si Castan at si Sanchez Roman. And I'll be sharing that in our future episodes. What you need to know is that Article 8 is a new provision. Wala yan sa Spanish Civil Code na pinagbasihan ng ating new civil code. Pero kung ang ating kodigo civil ay nailimbag noong 1949 at nag-take effect naman ng 1950. Mali na at this point natawagin pa natin siyang new, new civil code. Article 8 is a new provision according to Professor Balane, the man, the myth, and the legend in civil code. It is a new provision, he says, because it is an attempt to institutionalize the use of jurisprudence as being part of the law of our country. Jurisprudence refers to the decisions of the Supreme Court that interpret the law. When we answer questions in law school, there are three acceptable bases upon which we can anchor our answers. These are codal provisions or the exact wording of the law in the statute or codal. Implementing rules and regulations and this is often used in taxation and labor law. And finally, jurisprudence. The application and interpretation of the laws or the constitution is limited to only that of the Supreme Court. Maling mali kapatid na gamitin mong basihan ng isang ruling ng isang regional trial court sa isang tanong. It is only the ruling of the Supreme Court that holds weight in law school and in practice. There is however an exception to this rule although technically hindi talaga siya exception. It is most often applied in taxation and I need you to listen carefully to this. The Supreme Court receives a large number of cases for review each month. Under most circumstances, marami naman silang natatapos because they work in divisions or small groups. From time to time, they decide cases without discussing the entirety of the case. These are very short rulings and with no discussions. These are called minute 
about resolutions and they are often printed on pink sheets of paper. Ang pinaka-importanting phrase na mababasa mo dito kapatid ay no reversible error. This means that the Supreme Court has found no error that merits a full review of the case na wala namang bago sa kaso na dapat pa nilang pag-usapan. They are in effect a confirmation in full of the ruling of the Court of Appeals. As a rule, we are only allowed to cite the rulings of the Supreme Court. If you invent a case or a ruling and add that to your pleading, mortal sin yan kapatid at hinding hindi ka palalampasin ng judge, lalo na kung masipag siyang nag update ng latest cases. Normally, we say in the Supreme Court case of Company So and So versus Commissioner of Internal Revenue, that is the application of Article 8. The way the pink slip scam works is that halimbawa, ikaw kapatid ay nakapanalo ng kaso mula sa Court of Tax Appeals to the Court of Appeals at pagdating mo ng Supreme Court, may pink slip kang natanggap sa kaso mo. Halimbawa ay Blue Corporation versus Commissioner of Internal Revenue. In a future case, this time for another company, tawagin natin siyang Red Company. You can now use this citation to help another company. This time, your citation should look like this. In the case decided by the Court of Appeals of Blue Corporation versus Commissioner of Internal Revenue as later affirmed by the Supreme Court in Insert GR Number of Pink Slip. This then becomes the only instance kapatid when a ruling of a lower court is acceptable as basis. But I would hasten to add kapatid that this only works because of the minute resolution or the pink slip from the Supreme Court. Second point I would like to make is the principle of stare decisis. Stare decisis is a common law concept derived from the Latin maxim stare decisis et non quieta movere, which means to stand by decisions and not disturb the undisturbed. Stare decisis is there to promote judicial stability. It means that once a matter is decided by the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court and all of the lower courts will follow this ruling for all future cases involving the same issues. However, the rule of stare decisis is not absolute. Just because the Supreme Court has decided does not mean that the ruling cannot be abandoned, modified, or changed. Tinatanggap ni Korte Suprema na nagbabago ang ating mundong ginagalawan na kung ano ang tama at dapat noon ay maaaring hindi na akma sa ating panahon. The best way to read the case is to read the full text. It is the best and primary source of whatever it is that the Supreme Court is trying to teach us. When you read the case in full, you are able to understand where each of the parties is coming from, the legal basis for their arguments and how the regional trial court, the court of appeals, and later on, how the Supreme Court resolves the issues. The full text is also known as the main opinion of the court. From time to time, you will encounter cases where there are other opinions. A separate opinion is the view of one or more justices of the Supreme Court on the same case covering the same issues but expressed in a different manner. It may or may not agree with the main opinion. It does not hold as much weight as the main opinion. Hindi siya pwedeng gamitin sa exam o sa pleading pero kadalasan kapatid ay narito ang nagiging basihan sa pagbabago ng ruling ng Supreme Court at later dates. A dissenting opinion is the opinion of one or more justices that contradicts the ruling of the main opinion. It contains the discussion of the legal basis of the opposite side of the argument. It is always against the main opinion. Ang dissenting opinion ay dapat mo ring basahin dahil maraming professor na dito nagtatanong. Minsan, mas okay pang aralin ang dissenting opinion para makaiwas ka sa mga gulatan na tanong sa discussion. Finally, we have the concurring opinion. A concurring opinion is the opinion of one or more justices of the Supreme Court that agrees with the ruling of the main opinion, kung petition denied or petition granted. But, for entirely different reasons. Concurring opinions are always worth reading because they give us insights on the processes of the Supreme Court. An obiter dictum is part of the main opinion of the court. It is a part of the opinion which is not necessary in the resolution of the legal issues in the present case. Dito madalas napapaloob ang mga gusto pang sabihin but not necessarily ituro sa atin ng Supreme Court. They are merely incidental to or 
collateral to the main issues of the case. Ang obiter dictum ay madaling matukoy lalo na sa mga bagong kaso dahil sinisimulan niyan sa mga katagana by way of obiter. Ang obiter dictum ay mga statements na nagsasabing oo nga pala o oh, by the way ay kailangan nga pala. The decisions of the municipal trial court or the metropolitan trial court or the regional trial court may also contain obiter dicta. Remember that judges and justices are people too. Most of them are elegant writers and these statements are their way of leaving their marks and adding to the greater body of legal knowledge in our country. That being said, Article 8 teaches us that the opinions of the Supreme Court interpreting or applying the laws or constitution become part of our legal system. Article 9, on the other hand, imposes a duty to decide. Even if there is no law or the law is not clear or the law is extremely difficult to understand. Batay sa Article 9, bawal magpas ang isang judge sa isang kaso kung malabo ang batas, walang batas o sadyang mahirap lang itong intindihin. While this article could have been applicable 30 years ago, this is no longer true. By way of obiter, I want to share with you kapatid that the best time to go to law school is now. We are approaching a time when we have laws covering every single aspect of our lives and every transaction, action or inaction is covered by some provision of the law or jurisdiction. Prudence. Kung patatagalin mo pa ang iyong pangarap na maging abogado ay dadami na lang ang dapat mong matutunan. Our laws now are clearer, better defined and more easily understood even by people who do not have a background in the law. This is why Article 9 imposes a duty, no exceptions, judges have to decide. As it relates in criminal law, we have the Latin maxim nulum crimen, nula pene sine lege. This means that there is no crime when there is no law punishing it. When a judge has to decide whether a person is guilty or not guilty, he or she has to look at the elements of the crime alleged. If the actions proven by the prosecution do not amount to a crime, then the judge has to acquit the accused. Because an unact is not a crime unless there is a law that specifically defines something as a crime. Article 10, on the other hand, is the solution for when the law is silent, unclear, or difficult to understand. Kung ang batas ay malabo, magulo, o walang sinasabi, then we use Article 10. That it is presumed that the lawmaking body intended right and justice to prevail. Rarely do we ever find cases where the Supreme Court has to decide on what is just and what is fair. When that happens, that decision is rooted on Article 10 of the Civil Code. This brings me to my final point in this lesson. There are Three important rules in statutory construction. The first is the plain meaning rule or verba legis. Discuss that in previous lessons but in case you missed it, then there will be a link in the description down below. Verbal legis teaches us that from the words of the statute, there should be no departure. The second rule, that in case there are two conflicting provisions or rules, then we must harmonize them in order to give meaning to both. Kung wala talaga, we turn to the third rule. The third rule is a series of biases in the law. These are the directions upon which the scales of justice should tip. Halimbawa, dito ay ang Article 10. If the law is silent, unclear, or extremely doubtful, then we should find the interpretation where right and justice prevails. Elsewhere in the law, we find these biases. For example, when there is doubt in the construction and application of collective bargaining agreements, then the conflict should be resolved in favor of labor and against management. The reason for the rule is simple. Sadyang makapangirihan ang management ng isang kumpanya kung ihahambing sa kakayahan ng mga manggagawa. Maaaring umuo lang sila sa isang provision ng CBA para lang matapos na. Another example, in case there is doubt in the construction and application of the terms of service of an airline, it should be resolved in favor of the passenger and against the airline. This is because it partakes of a contract of adhesion. A contract of adhesion is a pre-made contract prepared by one party and the other party has no choice but to sign the agreement or not. Walang participation sa paggawa ng kontrata ang pasahero. Naroon lang siya para sumakay. He or she has no choice but to adhere to or stick to the terms dictated by the other party. In this case, the airline. The same rule applies in insurance. The bias is in favor of the insured and strictly against the insurer. In common carriage, the bias is in favor of the shipper 
and against the carrier of the cargo. In criminal cases, the bias is in favor of the accused and against the state because of the constitutional right to presumption of innocence. Maraming marami pa yan kapatid and hopefully sa iyong sariling pagbabasa ay matututunan mo rin sila. To summarize today's lesson, Article 8 teaches us that the rulings of the Supreme Court form part of the law of the land. This applies only to the main rulings of the court. 2. Article 9 imposes a duty upon judges to decide cases even when the law is silent, unclear, or obscure. 3. Article 10 tells us that in cases covered by Article 9, the presumption is that right and justice should prevail. I think we can stop here kapatid. There is a short quiz for everyone who is interested. Para naman malaman natin kung may pumasok o may naaalala ka sa ilang minutong nagdaan. Please do not discuss the questions in the comments para naman hindi ma-spoil sa mga susunod pang manonood. If you would like to continue our discussion, please type yes in the comments below. Even better, let me know your scores and your comments. Malaking tulong sa akin na malaman na gusto mo pang ituloy ang ating discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Karma and I will see you next Friday.